Hello and welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where we cover tutorials, reviews, and automations of all things IT. In this episode, we're continuing with our Postman series and moving on from collections and requests to now workspaces and environments. And so to kick off this video, we're going to go ahead and exit out of this tab right here. We have Postman already open. And what we'll do is then show and discuss about workspaces. So at the top, you can see I have my workspace clicked in a drop down here. Now, a workspace is the same thing as it is in any other integrated development environment, such as Eclipse, uh, PyCharm, etc. In those integrated development environments, they tend to hold projects, while in Postman, they just hold collections. That's basically the only difference minus a few other features that are more collaborative in Postman. So if we go ahead and click this drop down here. We can see that we are in our personal workspace. And if we view the actions, we have a few things we can look at. The details, which are very high level, talking about just, you know, the members, when it's updated, etc. We can also look at um, invite to workspace, which we'll cover last. We can do a rename of it, which is giving a new name, simple, and editing it, which as a personal workspace only provides really two options here. Changing the name or putting a summary in. It's very simple. So now when we go to invite to workspace, it kind of changes things here. What this does is it creates a team workspace as opposed to a personal workspace. In this case, it becomes a collaborative workspace where you and a friend or a colleague can collaborate on a workspace, or in this case, you could say a collection of requests or a collection of collections in order to just you know work on it together. It's almost like source control a little bit. And so what I'll do is for best maintenance purposes, I'm gonna create another collection so that I can share that one in particular and then uh, you know, invite someone to that and then see what is different about it. So we're going to go ahead and create new and we're going to call this my dev workspace. And we're not going to give it a summary. It's going to be a team workspace. And in this case, actually we'll make it a personal one so that when I invite someone to it, we'll make it a team one. So now Real quick, just so that we can get something going in here, I'm going to go to my personal workspace or my workspace and go ahead and share this collection with the other workspace, my dev workspace. Here we can put it there, do share. And now when I move to the next workspace, I should have that there available for me just so that we have something to work with. So now that I have my dev workspace created, we're going to go ahead and do uh, invite to workspace. Here I'll add in one of my email addresses, a test to add someone. We click the add button, and then we click invite users. And then what this does is immediately it actually cre uh, inv uh, creates a team for you that you're allowed to create a team name and a team URL that gives you some uh, customization to uh, your team that you create since when you invite someone it becomes a collaborative workspace or like you said a team workspace so I'll go ahead and name this odev odyssey and we'll call this odev odyssey as well click save and then now we've created a new team so you'll notice that within this team workspace, we should have, there you can see, we'll have an actual copy. Basically my dev workspace now moves to the team workspace as opposed to being a personal workspace now. And so we'll go ahead and look at the other options that we have. So you'll notice that add members is new. So now we can add more people uh, to this workspace. We can also leave the workspace as well. So such as you're not working on the project anymore, or someone is continuing it, you can leave it and others can continue from you from the one you started. 
And then we can also do a invite to workspace as before, and we can edit it. And in this case, editing it gives us the ability to do some summaries as before, but also we have the ability to control permissions. And so we have administrator type positions or privileges and then collab uh, collaborator type um, privileges. And in another video, we'll go more over the, the granularity between uh, the two and what makes them different. But as of now, we'll click save changes. And that basically wraps up the context that we have or the features, I would say, of a team workspace and workspaces in general. So now what I'd really like to do is move into environments. So in environments, we'll go to um, my personal workspace. Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one I created uh, prior. And we're going to recreate that one. So now an environment what it really is, is just a, a data dictionary. It's just a collection of key value pairs. Um, what makes them powerful in Postman is that it allows you to set variables in such a way where you're able to utilize them across different sets of collections. So the prime example I can give you is, let's say you're creating a web service and you have a URL that uh, associated to a development environment and a URL associated to a test environment and a URL also associated with a production environment. Well in here you can create three different environments development, test, and production and create a variable called URL or base URL whatever you want to call it and assign a different variable to each. So whenever you need to switch between environments you can really easily do that and any associating information that is uh, tied to those environments you can also put um, in an environment variable as well so that it really makes it really easy to move between them. So to really kick things off what I'm going to do is go into my get request and I'm going to copy this URL we have here and I'm doing this because we're going to create a variable out of it. And So first in order to really create a variable we go to the gear to manage environments and we click add and in this one we're going to call it postman dev with a variable name will be URL. The initial value will be, let's see, the postman echo and the current value will be that too. So you may be asking yourself, what is initial value and current value? Well, I'll hover over the I and it'll tell us easily. Uh, this is the value shared with your team when you share the variable in a collection, environment or globals. And the current value is a value used while sending a request. Current values are never synced to Postman servers. If left untouched, the current value automatically assumes the initial value. So in more layman's terms, the initial value is like your default value. It's a value that always stays there. The current value is the one that's actually used during runtime. So whenever I'm doing anything, sending requests, running scripts in here, it's always using the current value. And so What's powerful about it is that you can use the initial value as a default whenever you need to share between members, but also um, when you need to do, let's say, your own implementation, let's say you have your own password and username that you use, you can set those within uh, the environment variables here and it'll only be relative to you. So that's basically it. And with here, we have some two options as well. We have persist all and reset all. Same thing and the at the more individualized level we have persist and reset. All those do is the persist takes the current value and sets it to the initial value and reset takes the initial value and uh, sets it to the current value. So it's just switching between them depending on how you may have been using variables within um, your collection or the development of your APIs. So for now we're just going to go ahead and click add and now we have our Postman dev environment. So now you must be wondering, how do we actually reference variables? Well, variables are referenced using a double curly brace notation. So two left curly braces begins a variable. As you can see, we get a, a, a IntelliSense to come through to autofill. If I type in the letters URL, and then I type in two right curly braces, you'll see that we get this type of coloring around it which means hey I know I'm a variable and I'm trying to resolve it but you'll notice it says right now it's an unresolved variable 
And that's because in the top right corner, it says no environment. So we actually never set an environment. So if we go ahead and click the drop down of Postman Dev, you'll notice it becomes orange, the variable. And if we hover over it, it gives us the actual initial current values and the scope of this actual variable. So now in order to really see it work, we can click send. And you'll see that this request was successful and we were able to pull back the data um, associated with this request. So we know that that URL actually resolved to the URL that it was set to before. And now we can really repeat this process if we'd like with a Postman test environment or production and if we had uh, different URLs, but in this case we don't. And so the beautiful part about this is that these variables can be used within any part of Postman. So in the authorization uh, where my mouse is hovering over now and headers in the body, we can use the same syntax to reference the, uh, the variable. However, when you referencing them in pre-request scripts or tests in this JavaScript uh, integrated or well, JavaScript environment, I may call, uh, it's referenced slightly differently. So the way we would reference it here is by using some notation that they provide us. It's a Postman flavored JavaScript, I like to call it. So you'll see in here we have a couple of things. We have get environment variable where my mouse is in the snippet section and then set environment variable. First, we're gonna choose the get environment variable. And if we click that, we notice it actually auto populates this code here for us. And we have to set a variable key. Well, in this case, the key is just URL. And you notice if we do that, we get to IntelliSense again and you can see it actually come in there. So now, whenever I run the script, this pm .get, pm in that environment that get URL will actually refer to that Postman URL we set earlier. So now, if we also do a set environment variable, we'll have a similar functionality, well, the reverse actually. So if we set environment variable in here, we'll be able to go ahead and take the variable key here, which is also URL. So we'll go ahead and set that right now. And then we get to set it to the value that we're looking to set it to. So in this case, it can be, or in any case, we can get a response. And let's say we want to change the variable here based on the response that we get. We can go ahead and assign that here. Well, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and make it google.com. And so just to really show that this works, I'm going to go ahead and send this request off right now. And you'll see that when you do click this I right here, we get a quick look at the environment. And now we notice that we have a different URL here. So it's very, very simple. Um, you'll notice here that I have another variable here and set in the global section. And uh, I said this, I was testing around with this earlier and I have a variable here for that reason but the globals is just a different matter of scope and so the uh, environment variables are relative to the environment that we have selected well the globals apply uh, everywhere regardless of what environment you're in uh, regardless of what, what collection or request you're in they apply everywhere um, it's usually used for something that's very constant and doesn't change over time uh, generally not a good idea to use unless you have really something that doesn't change at all. And then what makes it different is that it's also applied in the scope manner. So let's say I have an environment variable that's also called good. What will happen is if I'm in that environment variable, uh, in that environment, it'll choose the environment variable good over the global variable good because scope applies. And, and since environment is a smaller scope than global, it'll choose that variable first over the global variable, just as in normal programming. And so there you have it. These are the basic basics of workspaces and environments in Postman. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel for more information on Postman and any other IT type videos. And if you really like this, I would I'll really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend. Thanks for watching, and I'm really looking forward to the next video where we'll go in a little more depth around pre request scripts and tests. Thanks for watching.